Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while now. If you're a regular subscriber, you've probably noticed I've been missing from YouTube for at least over a month. And basically there were some urgent things that came up in my personal life that I had to attend to. And that took some time. I wanted to focus on it. But all is well now and I am back to filming some videos. And today's video is going to be one of my best and worst series. This one is focused on new drugstore foundations. So what I mean by that are foundations that have come out in the last year. So for 2014, most of the foundations I'm going to talk about were launched this year with the exception of I think one which was launched at the very end of 2013. But I wanted to cover all of these foundations because I've tested all these out now for a while on myself. And if you're in the market for a new foundation, a drugstore foundation, then I want to be able to give you a little bit of a guide as to what I think of these, how they've been performing, and what they're supposed to do. Now, before I go ahead and start the review of all these foundations, let me just preface this as I usually do with these types of reviews by letting you know that I have normal to combination skin, and right now in the summer months, it's definitely more combination. I get a little bit more oily or shiny in my T-zone. So that is something to consider when I'm talking about these foundations because I'm basing them on how they wear for my skin type. I'll work my way from my least favorite to my favorite foundation within this group. And starting with my least favorite, it is by L'Oreal and it's their Visible Lift Blur Foundation. And that's what the tube looks like. Now the main claim on this one is that it instantly blurs lines, spots, and uneven texture to give you younger looking, more luminous skin. And it does say that it has the OptiBlur technology, which is similar to another product they launched a while ago, which did really well, and it's their Miracle Blur. It's sort of like a face primer or skin treatment that's supposed to help minimize your fine lines and pores. And so this is claiming to have the same effect. Now I will say right off the bat, when you do go to apply this foundation, it definitely has a silicone texture to it. It feels like it has a lot of slip on the skin. Now, I could tell right off the bat that this one wasn't going to hold up well on my skin just because it has so much silicone in it. And I found that throughout the day, I started to look really greasy much quicker than any other foundation I've ever tried. I would say I got about two to three hours of wear from this before I really felt um, greasy and way too oily looking. Now, in terms of coverage, this is about light to medium at best. And it does have a satin or dewy finish to it. I do notice a little bit of blurring of my fine lines. Nothing super dramatic, but I do notice that. So I would have to say that unless you have really dry skin, this is probably one worth skipping out on. The next one on my list is not really a bad foundation. It just wasn't my favorite in the group. And it's from Revlon. It's their Age Defying Firming and Lifting Makeup with SPF 15. I got mine in the shade Soft Beige, which is number 30. This is a really good match to me most of the year. Right now it's a tad bit light, but otherwise this is a really nice match. Right off the bat, I love the packaging. It does come with a pump. Now in terms of coverage, this is another one that gives you light to medium at best. For me, it felt pretty light on the skin in terms of coverage, and it does also have more of a satin finish to it. It does feel really comfortable on the skin. You don't feel like you're wearing a ton of makeup. But the reason that this one, again, isn't sitting higher on the list for me personally is that I found it didn't wear as long as I would like it to. It does wear a little bit better than the L'Oreal, but I only got about four or five hours at best with this. I think that this one would be one that somebody with dry skin who doesn't need a lot of coverage would really like because it does look so nice on the skin. It blends easily and there are a lot of positives about it. It just wasn't my favorite for my skin type. The next one I want to talk about is middle of the list for me and it is by Neutrogena. It's their Nourishing Longwear Makeup. This is one that I believe came out either at the end of 2013 or the very beginning of 2014. And it was one that I was super excited about because I tend to like Neutrogena foundations. So this one does have an SPF of 20 and I got mine in the shade Nude number 40. And the main claims on this is that it is a 12 hour makeup that will instantly erase the look of skin imperfection. They also say that it's lightweight and natural looking coverage. I would have to say that this one is definitely one that has moderate to full coverage. You can build this up and get a fuller coverage foundation. Now the reason that I'm not crazy about this one is two big ones. The first thing is their shade selection was really weird with this foundation. 
I found that either the shades were too pink in undertone or too orange in undertone. And there were very few that kind of fit right in the middle of neutral or yellow undertone. This was one of the few that I found worked for my neutral skin tone. The other big thing that I didn't like about this foundation is the packaging. It just basically has a, a um, lid and then you just pour it out. The problem with that, other than the fact that it gets really messy, is this is a really thick foundation. And I mean, I'm just showing you. I'm like shaking it here and there's nothing coming out. So it is a really hard foundation to work with. You basically have to take a Q-tip, something, and scoop out the foundation to use it. And that's just too high maintenance for me. It gets really annoying when you're in a rush. Uh, in terms of wear, I did find that it was a nice wearing foundation. I could get about eight hours of wear with this without feeling very oily or shiny. And I did find that it felt quite comfortable on the skin. I would say that this gives you about a demi-matte or semi-matte finish, so it's not completely flat, stark matte, but it is not a satin or dewy finish either. The very next foundation I wanna talk about is one that I kind of have a love-hate relationship with because there are some things about this foundation that are so amazing, and then there are things about it that I wish I could improve. Um, it is by CoverGirl and Olay. It's their facelift effect firming makeup. So you're noticing a pattern for 2014. There were a lot of um, firming or age-defying foundations, uh, basically trying to give you more luminous, younger-looking skin. And I found that really interesting because there always seems to be some type of trend each year, and this year it was about getting younger, more luminous skin. I feel like this one of the three that I've talked about that are targeting that audience um, gave the nicest finish on the skin. It does give you a beautiful satin, very luminous finish. It does have the tiniest bit of sparkle in it, but nothing that is overly apparent. You cannot see it even when you're standing really close to somebody, but it photographs so beautifully and it helps to blur imperfections. And that's one of the reasons it sits higher on the list for me. Now the big claims on this one are that it helps to diminish fine lines and wrinkles with an instant facelift effect and give you firmer looking skin. I have to say that I didn't notice any major differences in the firmness of my skin and no long term differences in terms of the fine lines. And the two main things I really wish I could change about this one are that it didn't come in a jar like this. because. Any of the um, skincare benefits that it's claiming to have basically diminish when you put something in a jar like this because it affects the stability of a lot of the chemicals or ingredients that they use in anti-aging products, such as antioxidants. They tend to not remain stable when they are left exposed to air like this. So that's one thing I would change. It's also really messy to use, and I use this cap to help protect it from going all over the place. The other big thing that I don't like about this foundation is that it only had four or five shades when it came out, which is a ridiculously limited selection. And on top of that, I found that on my skin type, I only got about four to five hours of wear before I started to look a little bit shiny and needed to go in and blot off or apply some powder. Now I think if you have dry to normal skin, you're going to be fine. I think in the winter months I can probably get a lot more wear with this. And with a little bit of blotting powder, it definitely lasts a lot longer. It does provide medium to full coverage. I found with one application, I got about medium coverage and it felt really comfortable. It blended really easily. So the next three foundations I'm gonna talk about are my personal favorites of this group. The first one is by CoverGirl and I was not expecting to like this one. It's the Ready Set Gorgeous Foundation, and I got mine in the shade Warm Beige number 215. So the main claims of this one is that it is oil-free and that it gives you natural coverage that is supposed to help you reduce shine all day. And I did find that most of those claims were true. It has really nice packaging to it. It does come in a really travel-friendly squeeze tube. Plastic, you are able to see the shade a bit down here. And the other main thing I liked about it was the shade Warm Beige for me matched me really well. It matches me well right now. In terms of coverage, I would say that this is medium coverage. It is buildable. Um, it has a nice soft matte finish to it, so it's not a completely flat matte, but it is definitely a matte finish foundation. So if you're one with dry skin or dry patches, then this one might accentuate that. You might not like it as much. I found that for combination skin like myself, 
normal combination or oily skin, you probably would like this. I think with oily skin, this isn't going to reduce shine all day. Uh, you definitely need some powder in between. In terms of staying power, this had really nice staying power on my skin. I found that I could get about six to eight hours of wear uh, if I apply a little bit of translucent powder. The other great thing about this one is it is super affordable. I think I got this for under seven bucks and I think for a drugstore foundation nowadays that's really good. You can definitely get this on sale as well. One big con with this foundation for me was that I found it does oxidize a little bit and I find that to be an issue sometimes with CoverGirl foundations. It gets a tad bit orange throughout the day, but nothing on my skin tone that looks obvious or unnatural. I would say if you're on the fair side, test this foundation out before you're gonna take pictures and make sure that it doesn't oxidize for you to the point where you feel like you look really orange. Now getting down to my top two foundations out of this group. This one I have to say, if you have oily skin and you're looking for a drugstore foundation, you have to check this one out. It's by Rimmel and it's their Stay Matte Liquid Mousse Foundation and I have mine in the shade True Ivory, which even in the winter months is a little bit too light for my skin tone. I don't know what I was thinking when I was picking this one out, but I know that they have darker shades that would work a little bit better for me now. Their shade selection is decent. Um, it does tend to focus more on the fair to medium skin tones, and that would be the one big con with this one I found, that they don't have a great selection for tan to deeper skin tones. Other than that though, this is a really nice medium to full coverage, truly full coverage with this foundation if you desire that. Um, it is a matte finish, but it is not a flat matte. I found it to be more of a soft matte finish. It does still leave a little bit of dimension to your skin. Um, the big positive about this foundation though is it controls oil amazingly. I found that I could apply this at the start of the day and go almost 12 hours without needing to blot off or apply any sort of finishing or translucent powder. So that is a huge positive. Um, I think if you have really oily skin, you probably are gonna find that you do need to blot off a little bit, you know, after four to five hours of wear, but nothing where it's just breaking down on your skin. It also didn't oxidize for me. It comes in a really nice squeeze tube again that makes it super easy for traveling or just throwing in your purse. And the nice thing about this one is that even though it's really thick when it comes out of the tube, it's got a um, mousse-like texture to it. It's really bouncy. It blends super nicely on the skin and gives you a velvet texture and finish to your skin. The one downside I did find about this one was that it can start to accentuate some pores for me around the cheeks. Um, I don't tend to have problematic pores. They're on the small side, but this one did help make them a little bit more visible for me. So one solution is to use a primer before you apply this foundation. Um, the other thing I found that helped is not to cake it on, go with a really thin layer. Um, but other than that, it is a really nice foundation and especially one to check out if you have combination oily skin. So the last foundation I want to talk about and my personal favorite is by Maybelline and it is the most recent launch of this group. It is the Dream Wonder Fluid Touch Foundation and this is definitely trending right now because I'm noticing a lot of companies, not just in the drugstore but high end, doing these um, really liquidy foundations. They almost feel like water on the skin and they have a very light texture, very airy on the skin. So this one by Maybelline though is a really nice one. It has an SPF of 20. I got mine in the shade 40 Nude. One of the downsides that I'm just gonna go ahead and mention now is it doesn't come with the standard one fluid ounce. It only comes with 0.67 fluid ounces. Most of the other foundations I've talked about come with one fluid ounce. Um, but I still think for the price point, it's not bad. This is kind of middle range for drugstore. I think I got it for about eight or nine bucks. And basically the way that you use this one, it comes with an applicator and I don't know how well, hopefully you can see it. But um, I find the applicator itself to be kind of useless, but I wish that this had some other way of delivering the product, like maybe a pump or a better spout for dispensing because it is a super liquidy product. Let me just go ahead and try to show you that. It basically feels like water uh, with a velvety finish to it. I do find that it can get really messy. Other than that though, if you apply it the way they recommend it, which is to shake it really well and then use your fingers to apply it to your skin, I find that it gives you a really beautiful semi-matte finish with medium coverage. It feels like nothing on your skin once it's blended in. 
and it does have really nice wear for something that is so light on the skin. I found that I could get about five to six hours before I started to notice a little bit of shine in my T-zone, um, but with some translucent powder, I can definitely wear this foundation for eight to 10 hours and not feel like it's breaking down or fading on my skin. The other nice thing is it photographs really nicely. One thing I did notice with this one though is if you have dry patches or uneven texture to your skin, this does have a tendency to uh, accentuate those. It kind of settles in them and uh, makes them a little bit more pronounced. So you do want to make sure to exfoliate your skin and moisturize really well before applying this foundation. As I found the color selection to be decent for drugstore. There was more of a range and it didn't lean too pink or too orange like some of the other ones. So all in all, this is my favorite one from the drugstore. But I would say in terms of skin type, my favorite for oily skin is the Rimmel Stay Matte. My favorite one for dry skin would have to be this CoverGirl Plus Olay Facelift Effect Makeup. And then my favorite for normal the combination would be the um, Dream Wonder Fluid Touch Foundation from Maybelline. So hopefully you found this helpful. I, I hope I was able to guide you a little bit if you are out there looking for a new foundation and were curious about any of these new ones. I would love to hear anybody else's experiences with these and any other recommendations you might have in terms of foundations. Feel free to leave all of that in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for taking time to watch this video, and I will be talking to all of you very soon. Bye-bye.